Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see what is per unit method. This method uses unitless value or unitless quantity. The per unit value is basically the actual value in some unit upon base or reference value in the same unit. For example, if uh, actual voltage value is 400 kilovolt and base or reference value is 100 kilovolt then voltage in per unit will be 400 upon 100 which is equal to 4 and then here unit will be per unit now let's see the advantage of per unit method so first it simplifies the power system calculation in power system calculation, we use value like kilovolt, megavolt, or so on. So, by using this method, our value in kilo or mega turns into just 4, as you can see in this example. Now, the second advantage is that it solves the discontinuity problem. The discontinuity problem arises due to transformer. Suppose in a network, we have this type of transformer. So here voltage is 100 volt and here it is 50 and there is this discontinuity. So this creates problem in calculation and this problem is solved by using this per unit method. In this method only power and voltage value is taken as the base value and then we derive the base value of other quantities like current and impedance. For example, if the base value of power is something in KVA and voltage is in kilovolt, then current will be KVA upon kilovolt, both the base values, and then we'll have IB but in ampere and impedance will be vb upon ib similarly if the base value of power is in mva and uh, voltage is in megavolt which i guess is not possible in a power system still for example we can take this so base current value would be this and it would be again in amperes and similarly you can find out the value of impedance one thing to remember here is that the Zb, the base value of impedance, is a phase quantity. So only phase value are taken for its calculation, which means phase voltage and phase current is used for its calculation. For better understanding, let us consider a three-phase system. Our system is generally star-connected, so we are taking the star-connected option. And the voltage given is usually line voltage, not phase voltage. So here base volt ampere rating would be 3 into phase voltage and its base value is taken into base value of phase current. So therefore I phase its base value is equal to volt ampere rating base upon 3 into base value of phase voltage. And as you know that phase voltage is 1 upon 2 3 times of line voltage so this will become va base upon 3 into 1 upon root 3 into base value of line voltage which is equal to base value of volt ampere into root 3 times base value of line voltage so base value of impedance would be base value of phase voltage upon base value of phase current now using this equation and this equation, we are going to find the base value of impedance. So this will cancel out and therefore base value of impedance is square of base value of line voltage upon base value of volt ampere rating. So this is the general formula of three phase star connected system. So now we can calculate the base value of impedance. And now if Z actual, which means the value of the impedance in ohm is given, then we can find its per unit value by dividing it by Z base. Now if we change the value of Z base, 
in some questions there is change of z base then how you're going to find the new per unit value see z per unit we are noting one for the old value is equal to z actual upon old value of base impedance so here you can find the value of z actual by multiplying z b1 into z per unit then the new per unit value which is changed due to the change in the base value would be z actual upon z base and here the new base we will take so now z b1 upon z b2 into z p u 1 so old z per unit into the new value of mva base upon old base value of mva this into base value of voltage in first case and then upon second case and then it's whole square so this is the direct formula and you you can use it for its direct calculation now let's take some example like this this is gate 2001 question so here the impedance value is given in per unit its base value is also given and the new base value is also given you just have to use that direct formula so this is the formula and now we'll place all the value 0 0.4 into the new mva which is 100 upon the old 75 into old voltage in kilovolts so it would be 10 upon 11 and then it's square this value would be around 0 0.44 per unit so this was very easy so now let's take another example it is from gay 2010 so this is the power system shown and these are its specification you have to choose 25 kilovolt as base voltage and then you have to draw the impedance diagram so this is the impedance diagram now we are going to find all the values of these reactants in per unit and on these base values so starting from this g1 here and it is on base 25 kilovolt and 100 mva so here the base voltage is same and now only we have to change the base mva so this is equal to 0 0.09 into its new mva upon old mva and since voltage is same so we will write one here and its value is 0 0.18 in per unit so this was for G1 now for this transformer T1 so this transformer has this transformation ratio here it's 25 kilovolt and on this side it is 220 kilovolt since we are going from G1 to this side so we will use 25 kilovolt as the base so here the base value is right only the MVA is changed so we'll change only MVA then again 0 0.12 into 200 upon 90 and into again 1 square and this is approximately 0 0.27 J so we'll write here 0 0.27 and all these values are in per unit now due to this transformer the base voltage is 25 kilovolt here but now for this part of the power system, the base voltage would be 220 kilovolt. And again, we will have this transformer whose ratio is now 220 kilovolt upon 25 kilovolt. So, due to presence of this transformer, the base value will again change here. And for this reason, it would be 25 kilovolt. So, for G1 and G2, you know the value. So now we will find the per unit value of the line reactance. Since line reactance is given in ohm. So now we will find the base value of the reactance. And then we will divide this 150 upon Z base to get the per unit value. And since line voltage is given in the question. So we will convert it into line. This is equal to base value of MVA rating into root 3 times of V line voltage its base value. So root 3 root 3 cancel it's v line square of base value of load voltage upon mva so now we place all the values 
220 whole square upon 200. So therefore, line reactance in per unit is actual value which is 150 ohm upon 220 whole square into 200 and this is around 0 0.62 in per units. So this is 0 0.62. So now for the second transformer, here the base voltage is same but we have to change the MVA. So now again this is equal to 0 0.12 into 200 upon 90 into 1 is equal to 0 0.27J. So it's 0 0.27J. And now for G2, so with the base voltage is 25 kilovolt, which is due to the presence of this transformer and its value is 0 0.18 per unit. You have calculated it with G1. So in this question, you can see the base value of MVA is always same and it doesn't change. But the base value of voltage is changed and this is all due to the presence of these two transformers. The second thing which you can see is that the discontinuity in the transmission line which arises due to these two transformers is also solved here in the impedance diagram by using the per unit method. And the third thing which you can see is that you are not using the heavy values like kilo and mega. We are using value in decimal like this to calculate. So it simplifies the calculations also. This was the per unit method. Thank you.